Hey everybody, Dan Moran here from Concierge Diamonds. Hope you're uh, getting ready for a great Thanksgiving. I know I am. I'm excited about it. I've got my turkey in the brine and uh, cannot wait to spend some time with friends and family. But we still have a few days between here and there, so for now, I'm at work and busy there. And today, our topic for conversation is how do I know if I'm getting a good deal on my engagement ring? I must tell you, I get an awful lot of correspondence from people. Pardon me while I silence my phone. Uh, and by far, the number one question that I get emailed to me and messaged to me is, is this stone a good deal with a link to a diamond somewhere on the internet? I fully understand why it's an important question, right? Why does somebody need to know that they're getting a fair value for their money, right? It's a lot of money. It's an expensive item. For a lot of people, it's the most expensive thing they've ever bought. So it's a perfectly reasonable question to ask, am I getting a good deal? Particularly given the opacity of the diamond industry, it's sometimes difficult to know whether the stone that you're buying is a good value or not. But there are a few things you can do to get a sense of whether a stone is fairly priced or unfairly priced. The one thing you want to do to begin with is to look at comparable stones. If every stone in this size, color, and clarity is $5,000 and the stone that you're buying is $8,000, well, it's not a good deal. And similarly, if every stone is $5,000 and your stone is $3,000, that should make you suspicious. It shouldn't make you excited. If a stone seems too cheap, there's a reason. Maybe it's got an ugly inclusion. Maybe it's cloudy. Maybe it's synthetic and someone's not telling you the whole story. Maybe it's stolen. right? So a diamond at the end of the day is a commodity. So if, if a price is too low, it should make you just as suspicious and wary as if a price is too high. Of course, some sellers are more aggressive than others. So if you find something that's 5 or 10% cheaper, than the market, good for you. If you find something that's 30% cheaper, something's wrong. That should make you suspicious. So step one, to find if a stone's a good deal, survey the market. Step two, you've heard me say this a hundred million times, it applies here too. Do you know the jeweler? Who are you buying it from? Are you buying it from somebody reputable? Does that person stand behind it? Will that person give you a trade-in guarantee? And buy it back from you at what you paid for it if you, if you change to another stone? Will that person warranty their work? Will that person stand behind the stone and encourage you to go and check? If not, you should wonder why. A, a diamond is a commodity. A diamond does hold value. So a seller should be willing to work with that stone in the future uh, and help you with it after you own it. If, if a seller is not confident in his or her diamond, you have to wonder why. So, Survey the market, know your jeweler. And then step three, know the stone. How can you tell if a stone's a good value if you don't know what there is to know about a stone? And a lot of people will think, well, I've seen the GIA report, so I know what stone I'm getting. But have you seen the stone? Have you seen it with your own eyes? Or if geography prevents you from seeing it with your own eyes, have you seen pictures? Have you seen videos? Have you seen it in different lighting conditions? Do you know what the stone looks like? I, I caution my clients against buying abstractions. In other words, don't buy a certificate. Don't buy a piece of paper. Buy a diamond. And if you haven't seen the diamond or at least seen good quality pictures and videos of it, you don't know what you're getting. You can't just trust the paperwork. You have to see the stone. So, if you're considering a stone, if you've surveyed the market, if you know and trust the jeweler, and if you've seen the stone, the only remaining question is, does the deal seem appropriate to you? You know that it's the right market price for the stone. Are you comfortable with spending that kind of money? Whether it's a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand, everybody's got a budget. I've made five hundred thousand dollar rings for clients before, and I can tell you that the very wealthy guy spending five hundred thousand dollars on a ring does not want to spend six hundred thousand. Everybody's got a budget, so you have to stop, take a, take a breath, and consider just because a diamond is fairly priced. Is it the right diamond for me? That's your last step. So we've surveyed the market, we know our jeweler, we know the stone, and we're comfortable with the numbers. If those four conditions are met, buy the diamond. Congratulations. That's how you know if you're getting a good deal. I, I've seen a lot of clients, uh, especially internet savvy people, build elaborate spreadsheets where they're comparing pavilion angles and total crown depths and culet sizes and girdle thicknesses to try to optimize what's the best stone in the world for me to spend my money on. Guys, don't do that. That is the wrong way to go about buying a diamond. You will make yourself crazy. 
you will spend hours and hours and hours and hours of your life that you cannot get back to maybe optimize an extra tenth of a percent. Before you spend that kind of time, ask yourself, what is the value of my time? If I'm trying to buy a $5,000 diamond and I spend 20 hours researching it, couldn't I have gone and worked and made 50 or $100 an hour during those 20 hours and just increased my budget and gotten more diamond instead? So, yes, you should do homework so you feel comfortable about it. But no, you should not drive yourself crazy researching this to death. Hamlet syndrome is a real thing. Analysis paralysis is a real thing. And don't go too far down the rabbit hole. That's why you need to know your jeweler. People like us who put the years in to know what we're looking at don't have to spend 20 hours to evaluate a stone. We've done the homework and we have the background to make an assessment quickly, easily, and confidently. That's why it's so important that you know your jeweler. So, to review, survey the market, know your jeweler, know the stone, feel good about the deal, stop overanalyzing. Once you've got those things done, write the check, buy the stone, propose, and congratulations. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, conciergediamonds.com, or just pick up the phone and call me, 213-261-4330. Thanks, guys. Have a very happy Thanksgiving.